thank you for joining me today. Um, this is Cut the Cable Cord. And today I'm going to talk about um, hardware options um, that will allow you to uh, cut the cable from your cable company, uh, streaming packages, and options for live TV, and how to find options for news and sports um, while watching it live. So some of the reasons why people cut the cable cord is that cable is too expensive. Um, sometimes people want to watch less TV or they're having trouble watching the shows when they're live because of scheduling conflicts, either work or kids or whatever. Um, so they end up watching it on demand anyway. And then another reason people cut the cord is that they're only watching very select shows or channels or maybe they're only really watching something on like Netflix and you know maybe one other show so why would they be paying for cable when that's the case. Um, so Roblox often um, a little bit less so um, but you know five or ten years ago a lot of the Roblox to cutting the cable cord was not having access to live TV anymore only being able to watch on demand. Um, not being able to watch news and sports and not having a lot of access to kid shows. So those are some of the roadblocks. Um, so now I will talk about hardware and streaming options. Um, so before I go a little bit further, um, my name is Michelle Doshi. I'm a librarian at the Lake Forest Library and I've been a cord cutter for about two years now and I find it fairly easy to do. Um, so um, in the next couple sections I'll talk about um, hardware options. Um, some of them require subscriptions, one of them does not. Um, and then I'll talk about these kind of live TV cable streaming packages that exist now and um, some of the streaming packages that you might have heard of such as Netflix and Amazon. Um, so, going to um, so hardware and streaming options. The first one is a digital antenna, and I'll copy and paste some articles into the chat um, that you can check out on your own time about digital antennas. Um, so a digital antenna is a piece of equipment that you can place in your home, um, probably like on a window. Um, they range in price from $10 to roughly $80. And sometimes instead of the word digital antenna, it'll be called an HD antenna or an HD TV antenna. With an antenna, you can get local channels, um, ABC, NBC, Fox, WGN, PBS, and there might be additional channels or sub-channels um, that kind of come along with those channels. Um, and they are free. There's no subscription. You just need to pay the price of the equipment. And then you need to have like a place in your home where you can put it, again, probably on a window somewhere. And just, you know, hills and buildings, if you have like tall buildings or tall hills around you, um, or like a lot of other houses that can interfere with the signal, um, which might also influence where in your house or your apartment that you put the digital antenna. Um, so definitely check out those links. Um, the first three links are links to articles um, that'll help you uh, kind of decide how you're gonna place the antenna um, in your home. And there's another uh, article there um, from Antenna Web that kind of talks about um, some decisions and you know factors that might involve um, what antenna what antenna you decide to get, and then the last link is from the FTC, and that's what this screenshot is here. And this is a tool where you can go to that website and then put in your zip code, and then it'll predict what channels you'll be able to access. So there are such a thing as outdoor antennas, but those are often um, kind of hard to install 
and they're also usually have code from the city that would, you know, tell you like exactly what kind of antenna you can put on your house. Um, so a lot of people choose to do indoor antennas. Um, outdoor antennas are a little bit better because you get more of a range. Usually it's about 70 miles. Indoor antennas are usually the station that you're getting the signal from needs to be within about 30 miles of where you live. Um, but we're pretty close to Chicago. So I'm not really sure if that's going to be much of an issue. We see here just from the partial screenshot that I've got here, you see Fox, ABC, Universal, NBC, um, and PBS, among others. They're kind of in the green, strong um, coverage. One second, we've got another person. Hi, Diane, thanks for joining. If you wouldn't mind muting your mic um, during the presentation. Uh, we were just talking about digital antennas. I've got some links in the chat that you can check out about digital antennas. Um, with digital antennas, you're pretty much really only needing to pay for the equipment itself. Um, and then there's no subscription um, involved in a digital antenna and you get kind of basic channels. Um, so, as I was just saying, you know, an, an indoor antenna, usually it's about the station needs to be within like 30 miles of where you live um, to get a good signal, but we're, you know, pretty close to Chicago, so I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. Um, this is the FTC website, kind of like a channel predictor, um, if you decide to get a digital antenna. Um, so, a digital antenna is the first piece of equipment that we're going to cover. Um, another one is you can get a DVD player and you can get DVDs from the library. Um, so depending on what shows you watch and how often you watch TV and what shows you're interested in watching um, and kind of what your schedule is like, you just just watching DVDs um, might be an option. Um, so now we'll move on to streaming. Um, so required internet speed um, is recommended at least 12 megabytes per second on MPBS for high definition really like the 25 megabits per second for, you know, really good quality HD te um, television streaming. Um, but any of these um, in our area, I don't think should be an issue um, in finding an internet speed this, this fast. Um, so pretty much most internet at this point should be plenty fast for all of your streaming needs. Um, but if you're looking for like a number, um, at least 12 megabits per second, or preferably 25 megabits per second. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to either raise your hand or just throw them into the chat um, while I'm talking, then I'll, I'll get around to them. Okay, so another piece of equipment is a smart TV. A lot of smart TVs, either Samsung or LG or whatever TV you have, will have an app store. And you can get some of the services that I'm going to talk about. For example, Netflix probably has an app in most smart TV app stores. And usually there's like a little kind of colorful button on the remote that you tap in order to pull up the app store. Um, depending on how old your TV is, there might be some apps in the app store that don't have like the updated versions that they need. For example, um, Hulu that I'll talk about later has a few different packages and the TV that we have doesn't have the newer version of the app, which is part of the reason why we got a, um, a little kind of stick that I'm about to talk about um, to augment the apps that were in my smart TV's app store. So these sticks, um, for example, there's a Roku stick, an Amazon Fire Stick, and an Apple TV stick that I'll talk about today. Each one of these comes in both stick format and then box format. The boxes are all a little bit more expensive, um, but they supposedly last a little bit longer. Uh, they're a little bit more durable, and um, they also process a little bit faster than the sticks. 
whereas the sticks are smaller. So if you have a TV that's mounted, for example, you can probably, you won't be able to use a box because you won't have a place to put it. If your TV is like mounted up on the wall versus having it on a TV stand. So the stick might be an option. Um, the way that these work is that you plug the stick into your TV HDMI and then you run a cord from the stick or the box to an outlet that you have nearby. So it doesn't need a battery. Um, most of these have a certain amount of cloud storage that comes with them. And some of these features change kind of frequently. So if you're interested in either Roku or Amazon or Apple, um, depending on what brand that you choose, but it depends on what other devices you have in your home. Um, so if you have Apple devices, you might choose to go with an Apple TV. If you have um, an Amazon Prime um, subscription, you might choose to go with Amazon Fire Stick, or if you don't have any of the things that I just mentioned, um, Roku is a great, great stick, great brand, um, and they have apps that work with all of your other devices as well. Um, so those are sticks and boxes. So these sticks and boxes have app stores where you can get apps such as Netflix um, or the other subscriptions that I'm going to talk about later in the class. Um, sorry, that, that was my dog. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so they all have app stores, and they also usually have a search function so that you can search for either apps or services, or you can search for like a TV or show or a movie, and then it'll tell you what app or how you're able to watch said TV show or movie. So that's kind of a use useful feature that comes with the Roku, Amazon, and the Apple sticks and the boxes. You can also, if you already have a video game console, like a PS4 or an Xbox, these also have probably similar app stores to the sticks and boxes that I just mentioned. So if you have like a PS4 or an Xbox, you might not need to purchase the Apple, Amazon, or Roku stick. You could just use your game console instead. The last piece of equipment I'll talk about is called Google Chromecast. The way that this works is that you plug the Chromecast into your TV, and then you could pull up a, an app or a movie or a TV show on a different device, for example, a laptop, and then you would just connect that laptop or phone to the Chromecast, and then it would put whatever is on your phone or whatever is on your laptop onto the TV screen. So you don't necessarily have to use this just for TV shows. You can use this for other things. Like, for example, if you just wanted to put, you know, a Skype call or something up on your screen, you could use Google Chromecast to do that. Any questions so far? I'm going to talk about popular on-demand streaming apps. Okay, I don't see questions, so I will continue. Okay, um, so the apps I'm talking about here are not ones that include live TV. Um, so for example, one of them is Netflix. Uh, Netflix has three different plans. One of them is $8.99, the next one is $12.99, and then the most expensive one it is uh, $15.99, and the difference between them is how much HD or if Ultra HD is available and the number of screens that you can watch on at a time. So the $8.99 or $9 package, you can only watch on one screen at a time, versus the $16 a month package, you can watch on up to four screens at once. So depending on... Um, how 
uh, you want to watch TV, if you're going to end up sharing the Netflix subscription with others, you probably want to have the more expensive one because you can have it on four screens at once versus if you only have the $9 subscription, you share that password with somebody else, then whoever is watching would get kicked off if somebody else logged in. Um, but if you're not going to share it, the $9 one might be sufficient because if you're only going to have it open on one TV, and you're not going to log in in other places, that's probably enough. Um, I don't think the, eight, the $9 subscription has HD, though. So if you wanted HD, you'd have to go with at least the $12.99 a month package. Um, and then for Ultra HD, you have to get the most expensive package. So whatever works for you, there's three different packages. Um, Netflix has a large library and some famous shows uh, right now, such as Orange and the New Black, Orange is the New Black and Stranger Things and The Crown. So um, next one is HBO Max. Um, so HBO Max is new. Uh, it's HBO Max is combined the HBO library and the Warner Media Library, which includes Friends, Big Bang Theory, and the Comedy Central um, TV shows such as South Park. Um, so you might have heard some hubbub recently about Friends leaving Netflix, and that's because it's now on the HBO Max subscription, which is $15 a month. Um, there is a caveat, though, to this in that there's two other HBO packages. Um, one is called HBO Go, and that's something that you would attach to a traditional uh, cable package. Then there's also HBO Now, which is for cord cutters using any of the sticks or boxes or the video game console um, app stores to, to watch HBO through. But HBO Now, does not have the Warner Media library of content. It only has the previous HBO library content, library of content. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because HBO Max doesn't work with either the Fire Stick and it also doesn't work with Roku right now. So hopefully it will at some point. But right now, if you want to use HBO Max, um, to watch the Warner Media kind of library of content, you would need to access it through like a computer or an internet browser or that Apple TV box that I mentioned. Um, so hopefully that will change. Um, but HBO has um, a great reputation with a lot of um, cutting edge shows like Big Little Lies, Chernobyl, Succession, Beep, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, also Game of Thrones. Um, questions? No? Okay. Um, Amazon Prime Video. Um, if you already have an Amazon Prime subscription, then you already have a subscription to Amazon Prime Video. And you'd already be able to watch things like Fleabag, Transparent, and The Marvelous Mrs. Measle, or Man in the High Castle. You would just need to download the Amazon Prime app to your TV stick or video game console. Um, not everything in the Amazon Prime video is free. There are some movies that you have to rent through it, um, but this is impartial, um, partially because um, Amazon doesn't have a, an agreement with all the movie studios out there. Um, so there's a lot of um, movie studios that will have Amazon Prime video that you can rent. Um, because it's Amazon um, and you can buy DVDs and other stuff from Amazon. Um, so if you search for like a movie or a TV show, it'll tell you whether or not it's included with Amazon Prime Video per their agreement with a movie studio or if you have to rent it for a small fee. This is Disney Plus. Um, this one I think also came out in so either late last year or early this year. Um, it starts at $6.99 a month or $70 per year. Um, you can also package Disney Plus with uh, the basic Hulu and ESPN Plus for $13 a month. Or if you're a Verizon customer and you want this Verizon Unlimited Plus plan, you can get Disney Plus for free with that. 
Um, so Disney Plus includes everything Marvel, um, Disney, uh, Lucasfilm, Pixar, and National Geographic, which includes um, such films as The World According to Jeff Goldblum, Thor, Frozen, and The Simpsons. The next one is Hulu. Um, Hulu has a few different packages. This first one is kind of just the basic Hulu um, with commercials, uh, which is $6 a month. As I mentioned before, uh, Hulu is owned by the same company as Disney and ESPN, so you can package the three of them together for $13 a month. There is a $12 package with Hulu um, that would remove advertisements, but I don't recommend it because it only removes advertisements on Hulu content. And there is more content that's available in Hulu um, that you would still have advertisements on. So I don't really see that without advertisements as worth it because you would still end up watching some things that would have advertisements. Um, some shows that you might have heard of that are Hulu originals are The Handmaid's Tale, 112263, Pen15, and Looking for Alaska, which I actually just watched Looking for Alaska um, this past spring, and it was awesome. I don't know if any of you have read the book, but it's really good. Um, so they focus mainly on TV series. Hulu is not very good for movies um, versus um, Disney+, Plus, Amazon, HBO, and Netflix all have a pretty decent selection of movies. Um, but if it's TV shows that you're really interested in, um, give Hulu a look. Next is Apple TV+. Plus. Um, Apple TV Plus, I think, also started sometime in this past, the past 12 months or so. It's $5 a month. If you buy an Apple device, you get a free year of Apple TV. Apple TV only has original shows. It does not have any agreements with other film or TV studios. Um, so everything on Apple TV is something that Apple has. It's a TV show that Apple created. Um, these include Defending Jacob. The Morning Show and Dickinson. And um, like all the other apps I've mentioned, um, there's uh, an app that would work on pretty much any of your devices. You don't have to have an Apple device. You can download Apple TV Plus um, on any of the sticks that I mentioned or on, even on your Android phones. Next one, I'm added on here um, because CBS, if you decide to get a digital antenna, is a little weird with digital antennas and that some people have trouble getting CBS through a digital antenna. So this is where the CBS All Access plan comes from. It's uh, $6 a month. It allows you to access everything CBS, including its TV shows, news, sports, and Nickelodeon, and you can watch it on a near any of your devices, and it also includes live TV, live news, and live sports. And then we've got a couple of streaming apps that go through the Lake Forest Library, including Canopy, where you can find uh, the Criterion Collection, the Great Courses, video collection, documentaries, independent films, classic films. Um, every year I always look through the Oscar nominated short films to see if they're in Canopy, and sometimes they are. Not all of them, though. And then Hoopla is another app through the library that has a pretty decent selection of movies. It also does have TV shows, ebooks, audiobooks, comics, and music CDs that you can download. Um, Canopy does stream over the internet. You can't download it to your computer and watch it offline, but with Hoopla, you can download movies, which I often do um, anytime I travel. I open up the Hoopla app, find a movie, download it to my phone so that I can watch it on the plane. Both of these allow you to have um, 10 checkouts a month. Um, for Canopy, it's 10 watches a month. For Hoopla, it's 10 checkouts a month. Um, so are there any questions before I move into how to watch live TV without a cable package? Questions, comments, hand raises? Okay. Um, 
Um, so now I'm going to cover watching TV uh, without cable. And this takes the form of packages of channels that kind of are similar in nature to cable packages. They're just maybe less channels and uh, less cost for those channels. Um, so many of these cable replacement packages have an array of news channels, sports channels, and kids channels if one of those three are the thing that's preventing you from cutting the cord from your cable provider. Um, so the first one I'll talk about is called Sling TV. These packages start at $30 a month. Um, you choose between Sling Blue and Sling Orange. I think the Sling Blue is a little bit better for entertainment versus Sling Orange. I think is a little bit better for sports. Um, channels included in Sling include CNN, the History Channel, HGTV, Comedy Central, ESPN, and much, much more. There are um, live local channels. You can watch live TV with Sling, um, and Sling is probably the uh, cheapest package out there like this. Um, I believe Sling is owned by Dish Network, if I'm not mistaken. So the next one is YouTube TV. Um, so YouTube TV is um, an actual package that you can subscribe to. It's not, you know, YouTube videos. It's, you know, the SEC network, NBA TV, PBS and PBS Kids, HGTV, Food Network, TLC, Big Ten Network, um, among others. So there's a whole bunch of sports options within YouTube TV. It's $50 a month and it allows for more than one user at a time, and you can also get a cloud DVR with it, meaning you can record stuff and watch it later. Hulu TV is $55 a month, and there's um, 60, more than 60 channels. I think YouTube TV actually has 70 channels. And um, you get both the Hulu library um, on demand original TV shows that you can kind of stream sort of like Netflix and then also you get the option of watching live TV. Um, they also allow for multi users and they also have a cloud DVR so that you can, you know, record a football game or, you know, a, a skiing competition and watch it later. Next one is called ATT Now. ATT TV Now. This one starts at $55 a month. They have a 50 hour cloud DVR, which I believe is better than both uh, Hulu and YouTube TV. There's 45 channels, um, depending on your location, might be a little bit more than 45 channels, which include uh, TBS, FX, TNT, Disney, Comedy Central, and more. And it includes your local stations, ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. And then the last one is Fubo TV, and this is probably the best one for sports. Um, includes CBS, Fox, and NBC. This has an awesome cloud DV DVR space, 500 hours, which is pretty unbeatable. You can be on three screens at once. Packages, um, this is the most expensive one. It starts at $60 per month, includes 107 channels, including uh, the Olympic Channel, OWN, TBS, TLC, Golf and sci-fi, among many more. So how do you pick? Um, depending on who's in your household and how people's tastes differ, um, you kind of want to do a checklist of what people in your house actually watch and what channels and TV shows people in your household would like to watch, and then how your people in your household watch them. Do they watch them live or do they prefer to watch them on demand? And what services are those TV shows on? Along with the overall budget you're willing to pay and compare that with what you're currently paying for cable. So depending on how you answer all these questions, you can kind of make a mental checklist of, you know, we need uh, access to Comedy Central Lifetime and the Big Ten Network, for example, and then also, you know, 
maybe you want access to Disney um, or Nickelodeon. Um, so you can kind of make that list in your head and then compare that to each of these websites um, for these packages have an entire list of the channels that they cover. So you can kind of combine you know, the channels that these cover versus the TV shows and then the apps that you want and then kind of add up all those subscriptions and kind of decide how exactly you want to um, try to maximize your dollar um, in a way that makes sense financially while also giving you access to all the content that you're interested in watching. Okay, um, so are there any, I'm kind of at the end of my presentation now, are there any questions from either one of you um, that you would like to ask? Um, comments from the talk? Okay, um, well, there aren't any questions. I really want to thank you for coming. Um, we do have a full um, set of programs coming up in July. We just pull up a couple of them. Um, I know we're going to have uh, classes in July on WordPress, on making collages in Pixlr. We're going to have a class on Google Photos. Um, and much, much more. So definitely go to lakeforestlibrary.org slash events to see um, the full list of events that we have um, planned. And I hope to see you again at one of them. All right, well, thank you both for coming and have a great day. Happy TV watching.